Hi, my name is Gwen Mazza, and welcome to The Art of Transitions. Today, I have a very special guest here today, Philip Simonson. He is from Minnesota, and he's going to share his journey about mentoring. I've had the opportunity to know Phil for quite a few years, and when we get back, we're gonna spend time learning more about this very fascinating gentleman. Welcome back to the Art of Transition. Hi, Philip. Welcome. Thank you, Gwen. It's, gr um, it's great to be here, and I'm and I'm grateful to be here for and have this opportunity to speak here today and just have a conversation with you. Um, yes, I am too. I was very grateful that you were able to show um, come to the other show as well, and I appreciated the work you did with the art of mentor, uh, the art of coaching too. Mm -hmm. So coaching actually is going to be the step that bounced you into more of your mentoring days. Right. And I'd like, if you would, you and a couple of your buddies got together and uh, started to do an activity of serious and deep mentoring. And mentoring is not necessarily volunteer work. It's a little bit different than mm -hmm. volunteer work. Um, it's a little, as I can see, there's a, a deeper, uh, deeper, <laughs> lack of funnier words, a real depth to it that um, goes much beyond volunteering. And so I asked you to come be with us today because one of the things that you've talked about and is very close to your heart is a group that you and a couple of your gentlemen friends got together and created mm -hmm. and called SoberCore. And it's available in Minneapolis. Correct. And what is the community that uh, this is founded in? Uh, this is uh, right there, right in downtown Minneapolis, the inner right city. Right in downtown, okay. Can you tell us the story about this great journey of your decision to mentor these gentlemen, correct? And women. And women, and give us the premise behind it, and wherever you wanna go, Philip. Well, yeah. Um, first of all, as I'm sitting here, and my thought, what's going on, you know, I had just thought in my mind. You know, we've been working together, I think as we said in the last show, nine years. And you were my coach, also special advisor, because I do, you know, mm -hmm. as we were talking last time, it, it's more enduring, it, it goes deeper, and, and uh, um, someone you just go back to, for, you, you have deep trust with. Well, this is the first time I've physically met you in nine years. That's correct. So I share that because coaching can be done. Welcome to the modern technology. Now we're mm -hmm. Skyping, first time in nine years you saw right. me this year. That's correct. And uh, now, before it was just phone. But that journey took me a long way. Uh, my personal experience through you know, the, the, the coaching that you have provided, what it helped me, and, and, and then now with my work with the Lennox Aberman Group, uh, where I do the, do the business advisory and coaching. Remember we talked last time about frame one, your ideal self, and those values. Well, looking at those values, and, and you helped me clarify those values, and, and, and they were out of order for me for a while. I mean, I had put career in front of being a good spouse. You know, so I, you know I, I have a piece that I own on that. That's what right. got me out of balance. And I didn't feel good about it. Because, you know, it, when, you know, we're about how to sub sustain performance. Well, you can only sustain long-term performance if you're in alignment with your intrinsic what's important to you and your values and your beliefs. Mm -hmm. And I was feeling like we talked last time, out of control, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. out of whack, mm -hmm. <laughs> because you know, I knew I, you know, I, was out of, uh, I was out of balance. Mm -hmm. So you br helped me bring clarity to what was important to me. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that I learned you know, in, in that, and I'll just share some of my top values, they don't really change over you know, your life, your top 15, they're still there, but the priority of them change. Mm -hmm. Right. And, uh, you know, it, uh, the first one, you know, as I think about it was, well, you know, it was integrity. And integrity is, as we talked about, that's your, uh, you know, standing up for what's right, um, being honest, your behaviors and words match, which you have, <laughs> you impeccably have uh, integrity. And, and, and what I've, you know, because you, you do what you say you're going to do. You've held me accountable during this time period. You're welcome. 
Uh, thank you. Because, you know, the benefit of that, that yeah. integrity piece, you build trust. That's the byproduct of it. And, you know, the highest form of integrity is where, you know, you as an individual are true to yourself and you're keeping your promises to yourself. Now, I wasn't necessarily doing that back when we first met. Because, mm -hmm. you know, family, you know, I wasn't being, you know, a good, good partner, a good spouse. Because I put career first and I you know, put my family first. You know, they yeah. even came back. I'd leave on a Monday and come home on a, a Thursday. And I right. thought, you know, calling up on a Saturday, you know, every night was being a good father. And there's a balancing act of being a, a provider and, and being a good provider and being a good father. Mm -hmm. But then it was my spirituality faith piece, mm -hmm. which, you know, you, you know, that had left me. Mm -hmm. um, uh, then, you know, I've now combined family, but being a good spouse, being a good you know, first, then being a good father, then, you know, it's my f community and my friends. Mm -hmm. Then it's the, it's the health piece. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to, um, uh, you know, we talked about frame two goals I've lost. I wanted to, for example, learn, lose 30 pounds this year. Right. I'm down 16. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I listed out, you know, and we talked about the goals, you know, uh, piece in, you know, in frame two, you know, I, I practice the five profoundly simple steps, have a goal. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, list out the key activities. Mm -hmm. Now they're simple, but not easy. Simple Correct. in context, but not easy very in implementa different. implementation. Very different. Uh, very different, right. Then you got to implement and then you got to monitor the progress and you got to help, you know, help someone help you throw off discouragement. Mm -hmm. And that's what you did over the years in helping me come back and be a good father and be a good spouse and dealing with the addiction that was running strong in my family. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I share that, you know, because I, the health, you know, and the meaning why you want and the purpose why you want to be healthy. Mm -hmm. And for me now at this stage, so I can be a grandfather, I, you know, and, and be there for my, my family. Uh, you, none of us can necessarily go back and rewrite our beginnings because they're correct. done. That's but correct. we all get to write our own ending. Mm -hmm. If we know to. If we know. And that's where a good coach and a mentor can help you out there. So I, you know, I'm looking forward to this next journey. But my last of my top five values is create meaningful work. And you know, uh, external motivations like money. You know, I was blessed. I had a great ride. You know, corporately, uh, stock options, bonuses, all that stuff. That's that's all very good. But you know, how many times you see? Mm -hmm. You know, they burn out, burn out at the corporate, they leave, or, you know, these right. entertainers, they get to a certain level and then right. they just fall off. They burn out. Mm -hmm. Well, they lose their purpose, and the purpose is the intrinsic value. And that's self-motivating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and that creates sustainable uh, performance. And as long as you're living in alignment, you know, as well, where your values, uh, your goals, and then your thoughts, actions, behaviors are all... One, that's what, you know, mm -hmm. psychologists you've seen in sports will say, you're in the zone. Yeah. Because uh, everything's in alignment. Well, now I've gotten in the zone. One of the things I want to do, in, in, and what I've learned, uh, and to the grace of your help, is that uh, in creating meaningful work, success are those things that one does for oneself. And success dies with the person. Significance are those things that one does for others, and significance will live on after you're gone. So, okay, I'm going to have you slow that down because it's very profound. Can you repeat what you just said? Sure. Yeah, uh, and, and uh, what I've learned, and I had to learn the hard way, and sometimes that's, mm -hmm. you know, you, you can learn from your own mistakes or you can learn from others. But I learned that success are those things one does for oneself. Mm-hmm. And success dies with a person. Significance yes. are those things you do for others. And significance will live on. You know, I joke, you know, now, you know, I don't think a good goal is dying the richest person in the cemetery. Right. Right? Um, you know, you need money to, uh, you know, to, to enjoy the things in life. But it, it, it's just like you need uh, oxygen to stay alive and breathe. But you, know, it, you, you never want to, you want to respect people and use money. Mm -hmm. Too many times people get it flipped around. And respect I, money and use people. Yeah, and I, you helped me right That's the it. ship on that. Mm -hmm. All right. So with that, now creating significance yes. in this journey we're on. A very good friend of mine, Jamie, 
uh, got me involved last fall. Uh, you know, it was 12 for 12. It's a, you know, there's a group called Sober Core. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as I shared in the last uh, segment, you know, addiction runs, is, it runs in, my, mm -hmm. in my family. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there's always, in the heat of the moment when you're in your own personal hell, you know, you don't, you don't see where the, you know, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, you don't see the gifts. Well, mm -hmm. one of the gifts, you know, over time, it's amazing, you know, how time heals and you can turn these, let's call them scars, the into scars. stars. Yes, I like <laughs> right? that line. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my journey is, all right, I realize now with this disease, it's, it's, been, it's given me a lot of gifts mm -hmm. and I want to pass them on. And so Jamie had me go to this event. It was a golf event, 12 for 12, 12 steps, 12 holes. We mm -hmm. played and, I, and uh, you know, I was there at the event and, and uh, Sober Core was set up for people who are in their first year of recovery. They gotta have three months of recovery. You don't replace, you know, for those who know anything about AA, their sponsor, mm -hmm. that's, not our, that's not our job. Uh, but we're gonna give them life skills. So what I did, I said, you know, Jamie asked, would you be willing, given my past experience in business development and this, mm -hmm. th this coaching and, and running successful operations and sales forces, could you come in and teach life skills? So last fall, we put together, uh, I put together, in, in, along with Stephanie and, and some materials and, and the different nine modules. Now I know you know once you say nine, now can I name them all? But the first one is you know is that alignment model. Mm -hmm. All right, and that alignment model, like we we're talking about, you know the you know your ideal self, what you're made up of, is the four universal principles and your values. And we do a values exercise for right. them. Then what are your goals? And then your real self. For clarity and, and getting uh, them focused again. Yep, and your real self, your thoughts, f values, your, th your thoughts and your beliefs or slash value, you know, uh, uh, your beliefs and your, and your actions. Mm -hmm. You know, that's your real self. And that's how others see you. But when, you know, external stimuli comes into that, we teach them then, you know, that's when amygdala, you know, triggering points, mm -hmm. and, you know, and, you're little, and you can get into what we call amygdala hijack. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I go right to the front here. There you the brain. go. Wham, first thought wrong, I'm doing, you know, you know, stop, we teach them, breathe, mm -hmm. and choose. But when we do the choose now, we ask them to practice the four R's. They'll go back to your four values. So teaching them how to make more effective decisions, as well as, you know, we, we use this with executives too, teaching mm -hmm. them how to make more effective decisions when underneath the uh, competing emotions. Mm -hmm. So you need to sit back, and we call it the forearms. When you, when you choose, think about what your values are, what's important to mm -hmm. you. Then recognize, stop, recognize, how am I feeling right now? What are my thoughts? What are my actions? We call that the freeze game, very powerful. Yeah. Then, okay, reflect back. Um, that's that thoughts, feelings, and actions, and, 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 and what's important to me. And then that's also the reframing in the big picture of things. Okay, these are the right. things that are important to me. Here's my values. In the big picture of things, I got to make a decision here. Mm -hmm. What's the best decision to make? And then you can, the last R, respond. Mm -hmm. So we teach them that because too many times people, they, you know, in their, in, their, in their first year recovery, they get triggering points. And they're, and, and, uh, they're just learning to build new life skills and build new mental maps again. So your group, and, and tell me a little bit more about the folks who put this program together. You bet. So uh, put it together. Fred, uh, Fred, uh, he's got 48 years of uh, uh, recovery. I could be off by uh, you know a year or two there, but if Fred would say, well, you know, it doesn't really matter because you know what. The ditch is equal distance I'm <laughs> from, from the center of the mm -hmm. line there. So, you know, I could go off any, it's one day at a time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, Fred started the Rebuild cent uh, Center, which, mm -hmm. you know, employs, you know, people in recovery. And he was on okay. the board there and that, he built that up. And he said, you know what, still people are having, there's no, not life skills. So how, you know, how to get a job. So when we mm -hmm. teach them besides, you know, just understanding themselves better and their triggering points mm -hmm. and those four R's that I mm -hmm. talk about. Right. How to put together a resume. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I'll then to do an interview and we right. give them, teach them how to show up mm -hmm. as that fine person. Right. Uh, then we teach them, uh, you know, we, uh, we go into there from nutrition and how nutrition impacts it. Mm -hmm. Doing a budget and about money. Mm -hmm. Understanding what they're... some simple life skills. Life that skills. Sometimes people really lose because a lot of folks start using in their younger years and they may have missed those building blocks to give them the capacity to make those choices in their young adulthood and their older adulthood. What do you think is the average age of folks who commit, or maybe better yet, what's the age range? Oh, geez, we got an age range from 21 to, you know, in their, uh, in their, there's some in their 60s. Some in their 60s. There, there's some in their 60s. Amazing. And, and what we do in, with Fred and then there's, you know, Rick, uh, and, and then we have, uh, uh, a gentleman who runs the public television show uh, Out in Minneapolis, in Minneapolis. Yeah. so we're on on that station as well. Yeah. We're videotaping every series and, and events, but uh, you know, then we get mentors in there, and mm -hmm. and those mentors we hook the people in recovery mm -hmm. up with a mentor. What does that mentor do for that person? Because it isn't their sponsor from nope. AA, nope. but it is a mentor from SoberCore, and what 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 is it that happens in that re unique relationship? Well, I think it's like you know, a very good question, and it's um, you know it it becomes a really there uh, as you were leading to in the last question. A lot of people don't have those role models from an early age, so they don't have these life skills. No mm -hmm. one was there to demonstrate them. You know, most mm -hmm. of us learn mm -hmm. as that you know learn by observing and modeling the behavior of our parents, right? Or a right. teacher, or a coach, right. and you're blessed if you have someone, right, in your, in your life at at some point in, in who is able to demonstrate those skills that will carry on, good life skills. Mm -hmm. This person just does that. It's, it's life skills. They'll touch mm -hmm. base with them, you know, on a weekly basis mm -hmm. and, you know, at least where the requirement is at least once a week, touch base for an hour. Mm -hmm. And it could be some of these people don't even have cars yet. Some are just mm -hmm. coming out, you know, just been out of uh, mm -hmm. a prison mm -hmm. and, you know, and they're in a sober house, etc. So you know what? They've never been to a store. That can be very frightening for some of these people. So how do you go? You know, you know, uh, Lisa's teaching the next session on nutrition and, mm -hmm. and how to even, you know, foods, you know, uh, um, to buy that mm -hmm. can help take away those cravings. The mm -hmm. sugar, particularly, because you're no That's longer correct. putting it in with the the, right. with the alcohol. But how to shop a store? Mm -hmm. And. Uh, so taking them to the store, mm -hmm. where you know what they, they don't have a ride. You're not making them codependent on mm -hmm. you. You know they they got to still sh take the initiative, right? Uh, and give you a call. Mm -hmm. You know you don't want to be chasing them. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's just helping them. Oh, I just had this interview, like you know, uh, and uh, here's how I think it went. Right. Listen. Mm -hmm. Be an active listener, and then provide some coaching tips. But mm -hmm. certainly, most importantly provide them encouragement, help mm -hmm. build up their self-esteem mm -hmm. and motivation. As we say, sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. you're responsible for the effort, not the result. So did you put your, you know, your best effort in? If you did, that's all you, that's all you can do. Do you think um, our culture over the past 20 years, because we get so busy at being successful versus, what's the word you said again? Significance. Significant. Would you agree or do you think that we became much more focused on being successful versus being significant in our culture. And maybe, just maybe, we're starting to see a turn back from different parts and different little pockets, just like sober core, where people, maybe even our age, our age, oh, that are starting. you got my yeah, mind racing now. Um, making that difference. I think, I think, you know, let's talk about that uh, some, because I think you raised a great point. Our age group, you know, then we're we the want to tell people what our age group is. We're the baby boomers, okay. right? <laughs> we're I'm the, the very end of it. Thank you very so much. Oh, we could be at 65 down to, you know, yeah. 48 or something. Yeah, right that's right. right. Uh, some would say we're very, we were very narcissistic, all about me, the me generation. Mm -hmm. Now, the, I think, you know, the society as a whole, particularly, you know, we live in a, a, a always been uh, there's those we talked about it early, earlier the external motivators mm -hmm. you know I call that the carrot stick stuff and so we did that right. very very well it doesn't right. give, create lasting behavior right uh, that but it's always been out there mm -hmm. 
uh, throughout our society. But I think it's been prevalent with, uh, with many of us in our generation because we're just so big. And then the technology now today, so it's present right. for us. And I don't think the success, in a lot of ways, we really knew what we were losing. I don't think it was intentional. Maybe some was intentional. Much of it I don't believe was intentional. I do think it's something that happened to us and we're now looking at the impact. Um, that's where I have faith and that's yeah. where I have hope. That's what I All right. too. And, and uh, so do I, it, here's, you know, in our generation, the Peace Corps was yes. started. Right. Yes. Now I don't see it as the Peace Corps. I see it more now. Your encore. What are we going to do, our generation, in our encore, our next life? Uh, we've been redefining everything. You know, the new fifty. You know, it was, uh, <laughs> the new. You know, it was, the new it was, sixty. The new yeah. forty. Everything's new. <laughs> everything's new, right? And age is just a number, anyway. Right. I, I feel like I'm still in my twenties, but my body's telling me something mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. But I, what I, I do know is that uh, I think we're. You know, it's the elder core. Mm -hmm. It's a phrase I heard from someone, and, and I, Ken Dykewell, mm -hmm. um, the power years, I think it was. Mm -hmm. They called it the elder core, and I really like that because, mm -hmm. you know, there's uh, so many f young children are just growing up mm -hmm. with, uh, you know, no parents, mm -hmm. and, you know, or one parent in the right. household. Right. So there's not that model. So you know, I I see where I do see we're seeing pockets like sober core, mm -hmm. you know, where people are, but other people are picking up and saying, you know what, I'm going to do, I'm going to go read to children. Right. I'm going to go. I'll I'll help. You know, they're they're volunteering their time. It's not necessary. Mm -hmm. We also, you know, so they're given they're, and they're given forward with their time, their money, mm -hmm. or you know, donating resources to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think we have some great people who are showing. You know, time will really tell how how good our generation does and mm -hmm. you know in, in the stewards of this this world we've been living in and helping out the next generation but right i think that what the, the gates foundation mm -hmm. that's a wonderful example mm -hmm. i mean uh you know warren buffett ted mm -hmm. turner i mean we can go down you know they're setting the example of how to give forward mm -hmm. with all the you yes, know, they are. With, with the successes they had mm -hmm. and how to you know, mm -hmm. help the next generation so i think I think there's a trend there. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's a fad. I'm mm -hmm. seeing more and more of it. Mm -hmm. So tell me about the richness of mentoring and the gifts it's given you. Because you have been very involved in this group and they, uh, the, the participants, my, I can only imagine uh, how blessed they are to have uh, this group of gentlemen and women being there simply to guide them and there's measurements and steps for them so they can see progress and I bet every part every person's progress looks a little different oh absolutely they're, they're gonna you know, just like it's life steps and you know life yeah. skills you go up and down them you know right. it's right it is a stairway it is a stairway <laughs> it is a stairway. <laughs> <laughs> stairway to heaven yes, oh, exactly. our generation. but anyway yes uh you go up and down it and there's a lot of joy in it uh you know example mm. uh Louise one of the one of the questions, uh, you know, when I was teaching uh, how to show up for an interview, I taught them like the star technique, and the star technique, you know, don't you know, get rid of the hypothetical questions if they mm -hmm. ask you or responses to a hypothetical question. If you were in this situation, how would you handle it? Or theoretical? No, and ask the question, frame it up, your response using the star technique, you know, describe the situation or task, mm -hmm. and then what was your action? and result. Mm -hmm. Show them the result. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the conversation, just remember now, they're interviewing you, but you get to interview them as well. Yes. So the question I, uh, I gave the whole group, now if we're sitting down today, and you've said we've had a successful relationship a year from now, and you're asking the interviewer, what must happen in order for that to occur? It's a powerful question, mm -hmm. and it's now allowing you, if you're the interviewee, to manage expectations. Is this really a role I want to get into? Right. One. Two, it shows that you have some good thought process and thought mm -hmm. leadership. Mm -hmm. 
Louise used it, and, and he used the star technique, and he was waiting, you know, Fred says, you know, I come into the church, and, you know, that's where we hold it, and mm -hmm. Louise is upstairs. He's all excited to tell you. He got a job. Oh, how exciting. <laughs> and he used the question. I love it. I love it. And, and he used some of the, we taught social styles and how to adapt mm -hmm. to people's behavior, so if you know what your social style is, and... He used some of that, so he got a customer relations job on. Did he really? <laughs> and, 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 the, and Luis said, you know, the interviewer said after that, this guy knows more than we do. Isn't that? <laughs> so that was, wow. you know, it, that, you, can, you can't get a better gift than that. That was just very, very rewarding. And and the, yeah, and the ironic thing is in mentoring and offering and guiding, I'm truly just guiding groups and, and folks, um, it really sounds like the joy that you receive is immeasurable. And I can only imagine if you're having that much joy, that experience, offering what is very natural for you, how that must benefit you in so many ways. And that's not the intention. And yet your health must improve or get oh. become dramatically different because you're releasing wonderful chemicals in that great body. I Absolutely. And you're also showing the gift of being willing to give to others and mentor so that they can do that in the future too. And that's, to me, where a big piece of this goes, is they get to give back if they understand what it looks like to oh, give back right. and the impact it's going to have to you. Yes, very great point. Mm -hmm. Excellent point. And, and, you know, a couple thoughts were spurred there. You know, it's just like if you're going to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Um you got to be able to provide value in order to receive value in mm -hmm. return. Mm -hmm. Well, just like a good mentor, you got to mm -hmm. be able to provide value to those your mentees and those you're coaching in order to receive value in return. Mm -hmm. Our value is just a little bit different. It isn't always necessary monetary right. rewards here. Exactly. It's just seeing someone having some life-changing events occur to mm -hmm. them. What would you ask of the community? What could SoberCore use? Or how could they benefit from the community at large? What are some simple things they could choose to do that would make a world of difference in this particular group and maybe other groups uh, that you're serving? Well, that's great. Uh, great question. Thank you for that opportunity. Um, first thing I'd say, you know, those who are listening, if the, you, know, you do not have to... Uh, uh, be, come from a recovering family such as, such as I have here mm -hmm. to be a mentor. You know, to anyone, you know, if you have, uh, you have some passion, you want to give forward, you have some great life skills that, you know, you know mm -hmm. could help out someone in, in mm -hmm. you know, getting, getting their footing again and uh, getting a job. You know, that's really the first thing. And, and so then they can have their self-worth and self-esteem and they can... That mentorship, if anyone would like to mentor, the give us a call. Give us a call at SoberCore. We're online. You know, you can look us up, mm -hmm. SoberCore.org. Mm -hmm. And I would well. recommend that for Rochester as well and any of the outlying communities in our area. Um, same piece. Step forward and begin to mentor. Know that your wisdom, time, and experience, which you may think is just what it is, maybe not that valuable, could mean a fortune to others. Oh. Absolutely. Nicely put. Any other pieces you'd like Minneapolis to know about in Rochester and the Rochester area to know about as well? Well, I think, you know, some people, you know, you, there's many different ways to give. You know, one we just said you can give of your time. You can give of your talents, as you said. Mm -hmm. there, you know, and right. then the other is some people don't have the time, don't have the resource because you know, mm -hmm. life right. still goes on and you know, you're being a good parent. You're going to you got a career. But you know what? It's uh, maybe one way you can give forward is with money. Mm hmm. And so, you know, we were, you know, we're a self-supporting organization, so right. any contributions would be welcome from mm -hmm. that standpoint as well. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to take this moment to thank Philip very graciously with much grace and much love. And thank you for giving and thank you for paying forward. If you would like to get connected with Philip about SoberCore or mentoring or anything that he's shared on the show, feel free to contact us at the information uh, that you see on your screen through In Spirit, and it would be my great pleasure to make that connection for you. In the meantime, please see where you would like to mentor and those individuals you might be able to consider giving to, 
And remember that those mentees will be the ones who actually select you. And you are the one that is chosen. And in return, we get to be of service to them. Have a great day and see you soon.